Plastile Industry AB manufactures and supplies engineered plastics primarily to the car market and the light and heavy truck markets across the world. The company is specialized in thermoplastics. Plastile Industry products include interior and exterior plastic components, such as bumper systems. The company was founded in 1934 and is headquartered in Gothenburg, Sweden. Plastile NV Ghent manufactures and supplies engineered plastics primarily for and is co-located with the Volvo assembly plant. The sophisticated molding process used in the manufacture of automotive moldings is fine-tuned according to customer demand. In Ghent, Plastile's co-located facilities allow a just-in-time manufacturing process to be deployed for their customer Volvo. This allows Volvo to reduce the level of inventory they have to hold in order to produce variable outputs of vehicles. This ensures Volvo can be completely demand-driven while maintaining minimal inventory. It was necessary for Plastile to have complete up-to-date visibility of their workflow process to enable them to tune the output to satisfy its customer, Volvo. The Plastile management recognized that a high level of process automation would be required. They turned to experts to Jaeger Consulting and Ubersense to provide a reliable production tool. A critical process in the manufacture of the plastic sub-assemblies is the manual input required to take individual mouldings from the delivery skids. Subsequently, they sequence with the target car in the neighbouring Volvo assembly plant. Plastile has deployed a Ubersense real-time location system, RTLS, to monitor the assembly process from individual mouldings arriving on skids through to final completion and dispatch. This process visibility allows the production planning engineers to study individual process steps and identify areas for improvement. Following the Six Sigma Continuous Improvement Maxim, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. The Ubersense real-time location system, installed by the Jaeger Automation, allows the workflow to be precisely measured. Ubersense tags are placed onto the mouldings and the tags transmit signals to a network of sensors using ultra-wideband radio, which is quick and easy to set up and delivers reliable high-precision location. Measuring the location of the mouldings in real time provides accurate, up-to-date information on the length of time the mouldings remain in any individual process step or the dwell time. The Ubersense system also records the length of time taken to complete each task. The data has been analysed by process engineering researchers at the University of Ghent, where the information is fed into a series of models which analyse the workflow process under the direction of Professor Hendrik van Landegem. The most important type of information that we gained from the tags was a very detailed set of positioning data, so what we call trajectories. And this is real data, meaning it comes directly from the actions that generate these movements. In the past, we couldn't have that type of detailed data. Uh, we would have to take the stopwatch and traditionally measure and then try to get some average data out of that. Or we could use a video analysis, but video is a very inefficient way to get good measurements. So I would say the tags really delivered on, on providing us with rich information that we could easily clean up and convert into events. Events meaning working, moving, the elements that we typically use to analyze uh, shop floor operations. Basically, we analyze the data by doing pattern detection, which involves some mathematical and statistical um, calculations. From that, we have been able to extract three types of information, if you like. 
One is the movement patterns of the parts themselves. And from those patterns, we can then look whether there is some efficient, efficiency in the flows, whether we can improve the layout of the shop floor. The second type of information are the working times, because some elements of the trajectories are, of the parts are linked to working times. And in that, we can then analyze the utilization of the operators, which is an indirect way of also analyzing work patterns. And the third type of information is that we use that, those measured trajectories, we use them to put into a simulation model. And a simulation model can show much more detail of, of changes that you then want to test out in a further uh, analysis. The big advantage of having real data as opposed to data that we measure by, by stopwatch is that the real data uh, is much more recognizable, so people accept more readily the conclusions from the simulation model. And that's a huge advantage that we didn't have before. Honestly, no, because as I said uh, before, Either you have to do it by stopwatch, which is very crude data, or you have to do a video analysis, but video captures mo uh, a lot more detail. And you should you either have to analyze it manually, uh, looking at the video, which is very tedious, or you have to do some automated pattern recognition, which is normal shop floor is too complex to do. So actually, no, we wouldn't have the data uh, before. We had several interesting learning aspects from this uh, project. The first one was that the data, as measured, proved to be fairly easy to clean. So we could easily extract the different events that were happening. Second one, because of the, the very detailed nature of the information, it's very easy to spot errors. So from the data itself, you can see whether there are gaps in the measurements or whether some of the measurements are plainly wrong because there was a tag that was not positioned correctly and so on. The third, and in my view, the most important learning was that using this real data was a real help in convincing the people to accept the analysis and the recommendations because they were all based on real data that was measuring what really happened in the shop floor. I think before you always had this interpretation that people could use to, well, let's say, uh, conclude that your analysis was not really uh, the one they needed. And finally, I think there is still a lot of opportunity left in exploiting the real-time aspect of the data. Uh, we have only begun to scratch the surface here, and I'm sure in the next couple of weeks and months, we'll find much more powerful analysis that exploit the real-time aspect. In the beginning, using RTLS, we faced some problems, but now we have overcome them and we see some benefits, like doing uh, time studies in a different way, uh, evaluate different ways of working in the different shifts, and evaluate uh, totally, completely different ways of working. I think for Plastal, using the RFID for RTLS, it has been a big success.